too often, people who are on the same team don't get along. Instead of being team players, they are more concerned about their own success. Sometimes team members have disagreements or outright fights. In order for a team to be successful, it has to gel. Team members have to overcome selfish motives. They have to overcome perceived differences. Vince Lombardi said it simply. People who work together will win. He also said, teamwork is what the Green Bay Packers were all about. They didn't do it for individual glory. They did it because they loved one another. We are on the same team here at Wisco. Of course, that applies to the cheerleading squad, or the basketball teams, or the marching band, or even the classes we are in. Your coaches, your directors, teachers, and pastors do a great job of encouraging you to work together for a common goal. You know, the same could be said for all of us here at Wisco. Or even more broadly, with all the fellow Christians we know in our walk together through this life. We're all on the same team. Our coach, our Lord, is encouraging us to play together as a team. Now, we're going to keep this analogy going. The opposing team, the devil, is trying to cause our ultimate defeat. The devil can do this more easily by dividing us. He tries to use our perceived differences, differences we think exist, to tear us apart. Differences like our ages, the color of our skin, our gender, where we live, or even who we voted for in the last election. With God's help, the Apostle Paul was able to overcome a really big difference. This is for people back in the first century. Jews would have nothing to do with non-Jews, otherwise known as Gentiles. In Ephesians 3, it says, This mystery is that through the gospel, the Gentiles are heirs with Israel, members together of one body, and shares together in the promise in Jesus Christ. I became a servant of this gospel by the gift of God's grace given me through the working of his power. Although I am less than the least of all of the Lord's people, this grace was given me to preach to the Gentiles the boundless riches of Christ. You see, with God's help, we can overcome our differences and build each other up instead of tearing each other apart. Helping each other is crucial to winning, being successful, achieving the ultimate victory. Well, that's what Booker T. Washington was talking about when he said, if you want to lift yourself up, lift up somebody else. So, let's talk about some real and specific ways to make that kind of thing happen. When you see a friend who needs to be lifted up, it can be as simple as smiling when you see that person. Yes, it could be more than that. You may know somebody who, for instance, needs financial support. Giving up hard-earned cash is a high hurdle to overcome when a person you know is struggling. But you know something? Something as simple as time can be an even more challenging thing to give to a person. We are all so busy. We have so many obligations. Spending dedicated time with a person can be so crucial, yet so hard to give. Even just a moment when we just stop doing what we do, what we're doing, what we think is important, and give just a moment to another person. Our family members and our close friends are the highest priority we have. Anyone, it says in 1 Timothy, anyone who does not provide for their relatives and especially for their own household has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. But we should remember 
that God has given us the directive to encourage and support everybody around us, even strangers. From 1 John it says, But if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? When we show love and support to people we know, and even those we don't know, we're reflecting Christ's love. It's called the social gospel. Giving physical support like food or money, giving emotional support, and mostly the possession of our time. Jesus speaks of this when he commends us for a life well lived. From Matthew 25. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you? Or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you? Or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, Truly, I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. When we show this kind of physical and emotional love to a person, it's a lot easier to share spiritual love with that person. And spiritual love is the most important love. Talking about Jesus is encouraging a relative or a friend or a stranger to seek Jesus to save them from their sins. Talking about Jesus is a completely natural thing to do after you have demonstrated concern for a person in other ways. Once we begin to encourage a person in spiritual ways then, the door can be opened for then many opportunities reminding a person to pray when they need God's help, pointing out a sinful behavior, helping a person remember that that sinful behavior is forgiven for Jesus' sake. In fact, that every sin we've ever committed has been taken care of because God loves us for Jesus' sake. All of those things become more real when we share our experiences. That's one of the reasons worshiping together as we are right now is so important. We're a team here at Wisco, a spiritual team, and we receive encouragement from our ultimate coach, our Lord, to go out of this room and work together in second period, throughout the rest of the day, and then ultimately our whole lives. I know, I know, we've stretched this analogy pretty far. But here is the most amazing thing about this analogy. The coach got into the game with us. We just celebrated this when the God of the universe became a little baby and dwelt among us. Jesus got on the court. He got on the field. He got on the mat with us. While he played with us, he showed us a perfect example of the type of support we should provide. Jesus took care of the physical needs of a person when he healed their diseases and he took care of their spiritual needs when he reminded them that their sins were forgiven. Every day is a challenge, but we have each other. And we have that same Savior who is here to guide us every day, too. With that kind of support, we can defeat the challenges a sin-filled world presents, guided by our ultimate coach, our Lord. We will score the most important victory over death so that we can exist forever with each other in heaven.